In chapter two, we study the fundamental framework of American politics and institutions, the Constitution. Your authors begin this chapter by discussing the case of Barbara Johns, who let a student walk out at her high school because she was upset that the condition of her school was starkly inferior to that of other all-white schools in her home. Her seemingly insignificant protest had an enormous impact on civil rights because a group of outside lawyers saw fit to take up her case and combine it with a handful of others, taking them all the way to the United States Supreme Court. Her small act of civil disobedience combined with the hundreds of others that were taking place around the country during the mid to late 1950s resulted in one of the most important Supreme Court cases in American history, the famous Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas case, which found that separate but equal facilities that separated black and white citizens were unconstitutional. The court specifically ruled that segregated education facilities were inherently unequal and violated the 14th Amendment, which declares no state shall deny to any person the equal protection of the laws. But as we will see in a later chapter, the Brown case desegregated more than public schools. It established the legal precedents used to desegregate the Jim Crow South and made desegregation the law of the land. Just consider for a moment the power that Americans place into this document written more than 230 years ago. Essentially, the Constitution serves as part owner's manual and part rule book for the processes and institutions of American government. It details how the government operates and presents in black and white what the government may do and how to do it. If you want to become a scholar of American government and politics, you must begin with a full understanding of the Constitution. As we asked in the previous unit, the question of who are we is central to the course. And as we've said before, the answer to that question is always changing. Yet the Constitution provides the ground rules for those changes and organizes our political life while the Declaration of Independence describes the ideas shaping our nation, the Constitution takes those ideas and turns them into laws. It institutionalizes American ideas. So the Constitution guides the government, but then there is the small problem that we're putting into our, our present national interests in the hands of a document that uh, the founders wrote over 230 years ago. Because the founders had no idea about the present technologies that we would be blessed with or the societal problems that we would face today, it is often unclear how the Constitution applies to modern questions and issues. Remember, we're talking about a document that is just 4,400 words written on four pages of parchment a long time ago. Many provisions can be read in different ways, and the document is silent on topics Americans worry about, from the internet and social networking to immigration and global warming, to pandemics. As a result, we always have to interpret how the Constitution applies to a case today. For this reason, we often describe the Constitution as a living document. Segregation is a prime example. The Constitution says nothing about racial segregation. Back in 1896, as states were imposing segregation on African Americans, the Supreme Court ruled eight to one. The segregation did not violate the Constitution. In 1954, with a little help from folks like Barbara Johns and the students of Moton High School, the court unanimously ruled that it did. Different justices in different eras read the same words in changing ways. We constantly debate exactly how to read the Constitution's words and how to apply them to the questions we face. So in the remainder of this unit, we will be looking at the documents, events, and historical context that helped shape the founders as they wrote and adopted this document. We will look at the two documents that most of us consider as influential in the development of our new constitutional democracy, and those are the Declaration of Independence and the Articles of Confederation. Next, we will look at the structure of the Constitution from the perspective of how it organizes our institutions, particularly the three main branches of government, the legislative, which makes the laws, the executive, which implements and enforces the laws, and the judicial, whose prime responsibility is to apply and interpret the law. I look forward to working with you uh, this week as we take apart and digest this most sacred of American documents, the Constitution.